Hello guys and welcome back to another FPL video. My name is FB Meerkat and today I've got my Game Week 23 team selection for you guys. But before I get into that, let's have a look at how the team did in Game Week 22. And it was a really good game week, to be honest. A nice green arrow there of about 40k places, 42k, I think it was in total, up to just above 140k. Re very, very close now to the top 100k. I was really, really close before the West Ham game, West Ham Bournemouth, where I had Bowen and Areola, and I was like, okay, I just need a clean sheet and a goal from Bowen. And what happened? A Solanke goal in about the third minute or something to ruin my chances of getting into the top 100k. But I'm very close and very happy with the score there. We got early team news about Man City from the main man himself, FPL Tony, on Twitter that De Bruyne was going to be starting for Man City and that Haaland would be benched. I was very close to getting in Haaland myself, but I got in De Bruyne instead and gave him the armband as well for a nice 14-pointer there. The armband would have been on Jota if it wasn't on De Bruyne, so I missed out on one point there, but I definitely accumulated a lot with the captaincy. And if I didn't have De Bruyne in the team, it would have been Palmer instead who I took out who only got two points. So yeah, really got a lot of points there. Thank you to uh, FPL Tony there on Twitter. Um, but yeah, most of the team are really, really good set of results there. Almost all of the attackers getting returns there. Saka of a really nice 10. Alvarez, of course, with the brace was the main player in the team. What a game Man City had against Burnley. Very consistent result. And all three of my Man City attackers got attacking returns in there. I do believe that is the first time I've had three Man City players in my team, or at least attackers for sure, and they've all started uh, because we've been so used to Pet Roulette ruining us. But yeah, it was a great output from the attack, but terrible from the defense. Ariola losing the clean sheet, but getting a getting saves. Really annoying as well because he, he, he lost the clean sheet due to a defensive error. So he could have really kept a clean sheet in that game and racked up the saves too. Trent was actually benched, surprisingly enough, only came on for a one-pointer. White with two points, losing his clean sheet, and Poro as well, conceding a lot of goals, only getting one point. Udogi, however, getting 10, so definitely with the wrong Spurs for this week. Uh, Moreno on the bench getting minus one, very unluckily getting a uh, getting an own goal. So very fortunate that I benched him there, was really considering starting him, and it, I might have started him over Palmer as well. So yeah, removing Palmer, the reason for that, number one, I had enough funds to go straight up to De Bruyne. Number two, he was the weakest player in my lineup, so that's who was being sacrificed to get De Bruyne in. And number three, he does have a blank coming up in game week 26, and I would like to have triple Liverpool for the potential double in game week 25. So I do need to have as little other players from uh, Luton, Spurs and Chelsea as possible. So getting rid, getting rid of Palmer at this point I thought was the right play. However, Palmer does have a nice couple of fixtures coming up. So it is a big risk I've taken getting rid of Palmer. And to be honest, I do wish Bowen was the one who made way, to be honest, because he looked very poor. West Ham in general looked very poor in that recent game against uh, Bournemouth. I think Bournemouth, to be honest, are a perfect team to counter West Ham as well. Bournemouth being a team who press up high and win at the win the ball high, and West Ham a team that seemed to defend unnecessarily uh, deep. So yeah, um, not really too sure about that uh, about those moves, but very happy with the team overall. Jota as well getting a goal, Watkins getting a goal, just lots of goals in the team, which is nice for a change, not just attacking returns. So yeah, really nice green arrow there, closing in on the top hundred k. I'm hoping to get there for. Game week 23, looking at the team. It's looking really good, I think, on paper. Uh, I know that it's tough between Liverpool and Arsenal, but with only three players there, I don't think that is too bad. And obviously, I'm benching Ben White. I definitely think that Liverpool are going to score in that game. Could be famous last words. But yeah, he's going on the bench for that. To be honest, I could bench Saka as well, but I think it's I think it's safe to play the attacker in that kind of game. Dubravka, home at Luton. I did. I have considered playing Ariola just for the save points, but I think when you have a when you have a goalkeeper playing Luton at home, I know they've just put four past Bright, uh, Brighton. 
the Newcastle defence seem to be as tough as they've ever been. So, yeah, I think, I think I'm definitely going to be playing Dubravka. Trent against Arsenal, hoping he returns to the team. Connor Bradley in the previous game. What a player he is. I think Trent might actually struggle to get back into the lineup, given how well Bradley played against Chelsea as well. He could be given the game against Arsenal. And I know that Trent has had a terrible time previously against Martinelli. So Trent could potentially be in the midfield. I do think he will play at right back, but it would be harsh on Bradley, who's played exceptionally well in every single game he's played. Um, it would be unfortunate to bench him. Alex Moreno against Sheffield United. I don't think there's been any word about Digne being back, so very happy that I've got Moreno against Sheffield United. Looks like a really good game, that, and I don't think many people have an Aston Villa defender. Porro with Everton away. Not the best fixture, but I'm still happy to have him in the team. The armband is currently on De Bruyne. However, my move for this week is looking like it's going to be Bowen to Gordon. Uh, Newcastle have three really good fixtures coming up. And I think Gordon is just a massive threat this game week. And one of, if not the best captaincy choice. So I just think that getting in Gordon seems like a really sensible play at the moment. I would like to save my transfers just in case we get more announcements about double game weeks. I do think having two free transfers, I, I don't remember the last time I had two free transfers in a game week. Um, might be the play. But yeah, if I'm going to make a move this week, it's either going to be Bowen to Gordon or, of course, it'll be getting news about Haaland. But yeah, obviously Jota and Saka playing each other isn't great. I do have high hopes for Jota, though. He he typically does very well in this Arsenal fixture. So I am hopeful that he does get a return there. Saka, less so. He did score last weekend, so I am going to be playing him, I think. But yeah, Bowen... Not not really happy about him. The away fixture against Man United, the fixtures aren't great for West Ham. If anyone's going to be making way in the midfield, it is definitely going to be Bowen. Uh, Alvarez as well against Brentford. I've still got the three Man City attackers here. And obviously with Haaland back, that does get things that does make things a bit contentious because obviously if Haaland states, um, starts up top, that only leaves four places for a potential seven or eight players. You've got, you know, the likes of Kovacic, Nunes, Bernardo Silva, Doku, Grealish. You've got all these players who could play in just four positions. So it does get a little bit dicey when it comes to who's going to start. So I could look to move one of those players on if Haaland is back to full fitness. What I've said, though, is that I will only move Haaland in if it's absolutely certain he's going to start. If we get news that he is starting. If it's a maybe... I'm not bringing him in. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with the Man City players I've got, and just hope they all start. If Haaland is declared fit, it's a bit difficult for me to get him in because I obviously have three Man City as it is. The two ways I could do it are obviously Watkins up to Haaland and then downgrading Foden. Not too happy about that one. Or with the money I've got in the bank, downgrading Bowen and then upgrading Alvarez. I could just about do those moves. Which again, I'm not really too, you know, I'm not, I'm not really, that doesn't really excite me, those kind of moves. So I am, you know, unless Haaland is declared absolutely going to play, in which case I think I definitely need to get him in. I'm really happy with the three Man City I've got at the moment. Even if one of them does get benched, they do have that double coming up. And I do think they will get very good minutes in that. Um, but yeah, De Bruyne does have the armband. If we don't get definitive news that De Bruyne is starting... I might look to Captain Watkins instead, who, of course, has that away fixture against Sheffield United. I do think Sheffield United will be really defensive in that game, and there have been a few games recently where Villa have really struggled to break down defences. In fact, I think it was against Sheffield United, the home fixture, not too many game weeks ago, where they really struggled. So captaincy is going to be a bit interesting if if I'm a bit, if I get a bit wavy on De Bruyne, which is why I want to bring in Gordon. If I bring in Gordon, I will probably captain him with the home fixture against Luton. I think that's just so good on paper. Even though Luton have looked better recently, he's just nailed on to play. He might be on penalties. There's no guarantee of that. Obviously, Isaac and Wilson are both out. The third choice penalty taker is Joel Linton, who is also out. So we don't actually know who's going to be on penalties. The likes of Trippier have usually taken them when it comes to penalty shootouts. I think Gordon's got a decent chance of being able to take them. And I think he'll be playing striker for Newcastle if uh, if they are both out. So 
I do like the look of Gordon this game week. I do like the look of his upcoming fixtures. I just think it's a sensible move to make because I think Gordon could really kill my week if I don't have him. Obviously, the likes of Gordon, um, there's Haaland, obviously, Palmer, and Solanke is another big one. Those four players could all do really, you know, could score high and really ruin my game week. But I'm pretty happy with how the team looks. On the bench as well, not too much cover. Bayer, I don't I don't know what's happening to Bayer. I would like him back at some point so that I've got him for the blank game week 26. Otherwise, I'm probably going to have to look to move on to another defender. And obviously, Porro is another one that I might have to probably on game week 25 to go for a doubler potentially um, and move him out for the blank coming up. But yeah, moving on to the team of the game week. A massive 97 points here from Benjamin Martin. I was astonished when I saw this score. Most of the score, I got 66, and I think that was a very high score. So seeing someone in the 90s, 97, was absolutely insane. He gave me a rank of 2,400, one of the highest scores in the game. But my word, he got all the luck this game week. Zinchenko getting 7 points, despite the fact Arsenal conceded. Udogi getting 10 points, despite the fact Spurs conceded. Um, defensive returns were very rare to come by this game week, so really good there. Luis Diaz getting 12, Saka getting 10, Eze getting 4. I did big up Eze over on Twitter. Was annoyed I didn't get him in in the end. So really well done to anyone who went for Eze for this game week. And the captaincy on Alvarez. Absolutely smashing it. Richarlison, another player who's just continuously smashing it. I think it's seven goals in seven games for Richarlison. Also another player who could really damage my rank. I think that's five players I've mentioned that could really damage it. And then he's got Bowen and Trent on the bench. I don't know how this guy must be a must be a future seer, honestly. With Bowen at home to um, Bournemouth and benching Trent, d d yeah, absolutely amazing game week here from Benjamin. So really, a really, really well deserved top spot in this game week. So moving on to the leaderboard, as you can see there, Benjamin in thirteenth there. Not really too much else changing. I think there were a couple here who were in the top 10 this game week, but yeah, not really much changing uh, whatsoever. Harvey is still in the top spot with only a few, no, no, it's not a few more game weeks. Is There's about 15, I think. Uh, my maths might be wrong there, but about 15 game weeks to go. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. Please leave a like and get subscribed to the channel if you've made it this far and you're enjoying the content. Let me know who your armband is on this game week. Do you think that Harlan is going to be starting? Is that just a set and forget captaincy? And what about Salah? When is he going to be back? And that's another player that I'm going to have to somehow figure out how he's getting into my team if he's available for the double game week. I'm currently working off the fact that he's not going to be available. Uh, for the double or that he's only available for the second game in the double but yeah if he's available and if Haaland's available I might have to look to wildcard to potentially get them both in because I've really spread my funds around uh, I'm going off the fact that neither of them are going to be available but yeah certainly interesting times in FPL I hope you've all enjoyed and I'll see you in the next FPL video